Hello friends and welcome to the final video for 2020. Um, today I'm going to be doing my 2020 book survey, so I'm just answering questions and throwing out some stats about my 2020 reading. So, I read 50, 61 books in 2020, which is not the 65 I wanted to get to, but it's fine. Number of rereads would be two. I read... I reread Sarah J. Mass's Court of Thorns and Roses and also A Darker Shade of Magic by the e. Schwab. Uh, I pretty much read those once a year. I'm obsessed with them. So, And then the genre that I read the most from is fantasy. No one is surprised here. So for the first question, that would be your favorite book of the year. And that would be The Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Chakraborty. Chakraborty. And this is the second book in the City of, Gra City of Brass trilogy. And it is so amazing. It takes place partly into like a completely fantastical world like made up. But also some of it takes place in Cairo. So and the magic system in this book is just phenomenal the description and you just feel like you're actually in the story it was incredible and i love nari she was probably my favorite character to follow this whole year all right question two is what book were you excited about and thought you were going to love but didn't that would be crescent city by sarah j mass which is probably very surprising because you if you've been here at all you know i love sarah j mass usually but this was not my style of fantasy. This was more urban fantasy, like gritty and dark, but not high fantasy. I don't know. I didn't really care for it or the characters, and that's like a deal breaker. So, not a fan. Number three is the most surprising in a good or bad way book that you read. And that was City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. This book started out decent and like the... I think the storyline could have been fine but it was the incestual implications in this book that uh i'm done i don't want to continue with this series there's like a hundred books in her series and i just am not interested in reading them anymore because that's disgusting to me i just can't get behind it uh, number four is a book that you pushed most people to read and that was city of brass which is the first in this series um, most people didn't listen to me, but that's because most of my family and friends have just really different reading tastes. They're not really into fantasy like I am. All right, so the best series that you started in 2020, and that would be Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson. I really enjoyed that book, and I actually have plans to soon pick up the second one which is The Well of Ascension. So I really enjoyed that um, that book. That series is really great. Your favorite new author you discovered in 2020? And that would be, again, S.A. Chakraborty. And I just love her writing. I love her writing and her style. Um, she's amazing. The best book from a genre you don't typically read or was out of your comfort zone, and that is The Duchess Deal by Tessa Dare which is a romance um and i don't mind romance like it's fun sometimes but it's not my favorite i usually don't gravitate towards that it was a good book though uh, it was very interesting and i uh, really enjoyed the characters number eight is the most action-packed thrilling unput downable book of the year and while it wasn't one of my favorite books of the year it would be no exit by taylor adams uh, it was good. I really enjoyed it. The reason it gets th this question is because it takes place over like 16 hours and so much happens. It just, things just keep happening. It's very action packed and it was a really good book. Um, that's the only place that makes it onto my list though. A book you read in 2020 that you would be most likely to reread next year and that's pretty much none of the standalones. However, Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. Skyward by Brandon Sanderson, I will be rereading actually here really soon because the third book in that series is coming out this year and it is my most anticipated read of 2021. I cannot wait. 
uh, he made an announcement saying that his uh, Stormlight Archives book number four took longer than he expected so it had to be pushed back and I'm sad about that but it is coming apparently in November of 2021 so I'm excited for that okay and the next question is your favorite book the, your favorite cover of a book you read in 2020 and that is The Need by Helen Phillips. I just love the, I just love the simple greenery of this on the black. It's just beautiful to me. I love it. Um, the next question is who is the most memorable character of 2020 and this one will probably surprise you. I know I said my favorite was Nari which I did. I love following her but my most memorable is actually Doomslug from the Skyward series. Um, and he's kind of just like a little pet friend, but I listened to the audiobooks of that and the narrator who, you know, made the noises that I guess uh, was so good. And Doomslug just sounds like such a gem and I would love to have one of my own. Actually, I think I'm going to try and crochet a Doomslug and see how that turns out because they sound so cute and adorable. All right, so the next book is, or the next question is your most thought-provoking, life-changing book of 2020. And the answer to that is They Cage the Animals at Night, um, which I own, but I can't find it. Uh, I am sending it to my sister to read because she enjoys books like this. Um, but it definitely makes you think about how children in foster care are treated and it was definitely very harrowing and sad and it still kind of breaks my heart to think about it all right so number 15 is your favorite passage or quote from a book that you read in 2020 and you'll be surprised to hear it came from the city of brass trilogy specifically from empire of gold and it says luck is a fairy tale we used to make people feel better about the world being shit I just thought that was pretty fitting and it's actually really fitting for 2022. Um, number 16 is what is the shortest and longest book that you read in 2020? The shortest was The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Gilman and that was 16 pages and the longest was The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson which was 1004 pages. The next question is, what was the most beautifully written book in 2020? And that is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. Sorry, I didn't know which pen name she used. Um, and this one is just, it's beautiful. Honestly, I would love to get like the constellation from this title tattooed onto me because it, this book was very beautiful and heartbreaking and warming all at the same time. But the way she writes... Is just phenomenal all right next question is the book that shocked you the most and that was this mortal coil by emily suveda which i just read literally last week or something um and so i was thinking about this question and i was like well maybe it's only because you just read it it's like fresh in your mind but no i think if i'd read it in january and thought back to it the twist in this book well one of them was just <laughs> I still can't I, I like really my jaw literally dropped when I read it and I was like oh my god what so this is a really amazing book you should pick it up if you like dystopian plague um, searching for a vaccine type of book favorite book that you read in 2020 from an author you've read previously and that is supernova by Marissa Meyer if you look at my shelf you can see I've got cinder scarlet cress winter uh, in two different copies. I've got the original and the newer set. Um, I, lo I read that three times, by the way. I love Marissa Meyer. So reading Renegades and then Supernova. I read Supernova this year. Um, I loved it, of course. It was amazing. The next question is, the best book you read in 2020 that you read based solely on a recommendation from somebody else, peer pressure slash book bookstagram? And that is the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. And I read that because in one of my readathons, they were reading it as a group read and I could not find it on the island. So I went on the waiting list at the library and um, I didn't get it until December also, but I did read it in December and 
I'm glad I still ended up reading it even though it was outside of October because I gave it four stars but it was a really good book like really good so sometimes uh, peer pressure is like a good thing so the next question is the best world building most vivid setting you read this year yeah it's the kingdom of copper actually it's not just this book it's this series the city of brass which I've mentioned like a million times now but it was just phenomenal the way she set up and described her settings like I just truly felt like I was there even walking through the deserts by Cairo I literally could just imagine being there she has a way with words and yes this book all her books are really long but they they don't feel like overdone like some fantasy um, she uses just the right amount of description and words but doesn't go too hard so I felt like I was there but I wasn't like being drugged through with her wordy sentences the next question is a book that put a smile on your face or was the most fun to read and that was the overdue life of Amy Byler by Kelly Harms and this book was exactly what they asked it was just a fun read it was cute seeing her go from like a divorced sad depressed librarian um who was just going through some really rough times to finding herself falling in love it was a very cute story and i enjoyed it a lot so the last question is the most unique book that uh you read in 2020 and this is actually another repeat but it is not the city of brass so but that is the need by helen Phillips and this book I gave it three stars like it was an okay book the ending was a little weird um the story premise was definitely strange uh and definitely unique um so it follows a scientist and they find a hole basically in the earth I'm pretty sure she's a paleontologist paleontologist hold on What is it called when you study plant fossils? But anyways, it's about a scientist who she studies plant fossils and so they're in this hole in the earth. But they've also discovered a Bible and a couple of other things that imply that history isn't what they think it is. Like the Bible they found uh, implies that God is a woman instead of a man as in like our world so it implies that there's another universe okay and um well the way it turns out is actually pretty wild so it was definitely a unique concept and while it wasn't the best book i've read it's one that i haven't forgotten and yeah it's just really interesting you guys should definitely pick it up if you're interested it was short too it was 250 pages that's not very long so that was the last question i am going to answer but i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i hope you guys had a great year of reading mine wasn't quite what i wanted it to be but that's okay this whole year hasn't quite been what we all expected but hopefully next year will bring better times and maybe i'll actually hit my goal next year <laughs> i'm gonna keep it at 65 i think um normally every year i succeed i bump it up by like four or five books but this year i'm just going to keep it at 65 or for 2021 yeah so i hope you guys enjoy this video let me know if you've read any of these and also what your favorite book of the year was in the comments i will and see you guys in my next I video hope you guys bye